Welcome to this video where we will talk about the accelerometer in the sedimeter. The instrument, the SM4, has an accelerometer which measures the 3D orientation in space and the purpose is to detect if the instrument is vertical or if it has started falling over or is lying down because it's known to happen, especially if you put it on a platform on the bottom, that forces on the seafloor can turn it over and those data will obviously not be valid if this for instance is pointing down like this. So that was the original reason. However, in order to make sure that it's not a, a fluke, we don't take just a single measurement, we take a series of measurements. As default, this takes 30 measurements at the rate of 10 Hertz and in 8-bit resolution. And those data are presented in every measurement. Also, we added the feature of conditions-based monitoring. If there is an impact, it will measure uh, 30 samples, some before, some after the impact. And this has been proven very useful because if something turns it over, we can see and guess what it is. Something hits it, there have been recordings of bears in, a, in Canada hitting it and uh, we've had recordings of anchor chains pulling over it. We even had a case where an anchor chain pulled it over and then another anchor chain put it right again and the customer thought everything had been fine but in the middle there were data that were of no useful quality. However, the CBM is active from the moment you, you put it in logger mode. And to avoid that the memory fills up before you have put it out, there is a feature in it that it has to be, be within plus minus 60 degrees from vertical in order to work. So when you transport it to the location, if you transport it lying down, it should not record CBM measurements. Unless you would put it longitudinally in a boat that's going like a, a speedboat going through waves where you get a lot of shock in this direction then it could actually measure. If you want to be maximally sure that it's not measuring you can even transport it upside down with some cushioning. Now we have a new feature for you in the new software which you can download if you go to the lindrom.com website and you select Downloads Software. You will get a list of the software and the first version that incorporates this novelty is 5.2. It, as it says here, it adds the possibility to adjust the accelerometer settings, including the CBM parameters. You can actually turn it off if you want. The default is 10 Hz with 8 bits, 30 samples, as I just said. But now users can change this to 10 bits, in which case you only get 20 samples, and the frequency can be set from 1 Hz to 400 Hz. If you set it to 0, it will turn off the accelerometer. But you can do that too. So the way to do that is to open the software. This is the new version here. And go to Edit Advanced Reconfigure Accelerometer. Uh, here are the instructions and we'll go straight to it here. Edit Get Settings. This reads in the settings that are in the accelerometer, in the centimeter now. And here we see 8 bits, which represents 250 feet, uh, 256 steps of, of uh, g-force. Uh, and uh, 30 samples. Data rate is 10 Hz in default, so sampling time becomes 3 seconds. And the full scale range is plus minus 2G. And you can change this to 4, 8 and 16G if you wish. So for instance we can change this to 10 bits and 4G. We get different condition here. But we only get 20 samples. 
We can also change the measuring rate, but let me tell you one thing. If you put it on 1 Hz, you should be aware of that you should not put a measuring time shorter than 32 seconds. That's because the buffer in here is 32 samples. So if you keep measuring at a faster rate than 1 every 32 seconds, you will eventually start getting nonsense data in the buffer. So, you could also put it on a very high measurement rate, like 400 Hz. But if you go up to a high, high rate, it will start to consume a little bit more electricity battery. Not much, but a little bit. So you may want to avoid going over about 100 Hz. Now, the way to... let's say we change this. We, we want to measure at um, 25 Hz, 10 bits. How do we do that? We go to Edit, Set Settings, Upload. Now it changed the settings in the instrument, but it has not taken effect because it hasn't yet reached the accelerometer. So the way to reach the accelerometer is we have to reset it. And you do that by taking this parts bag that came with the instrument, find the, the magnet, the rig magnet here and approach the rig magnet to the place where it says reset on the back side here. Now we can make sure that everything is working by doing edit get settings. We will check that it's in the instrument but we will actually not see if it's been changed in the accelerometer until we start measuring which we do here data monitor and display. And we can do real-time measurement here. So I will take an interval of 30 seconds. And I will start measuring here. Monitor, control, network as master. That's the setting for controlling the instrument from the computer. And here we can see when it's time to measure. The data will come in. The last measurement will come in here, always. This uh, window here is for alerts. You can set it up to send emails and set alarms when it exceeds the values you defined here. So that it took the measurement. And we can go to <coughs> data table. And over here to the right, we can see the tilt, 24.4 degrees, that seems about right, what I held it in. And the amount of vibration here in milli-G. The old software had the wrong unit here, it said meter per second square, it should be milli-G, even in the wrong, the old instrument. And once we get a second value, we can also see it in the data plot. So I'll go back to the data table and go to the left. Here you see the date and time, and a timed measurement will always synchronize with the minutes and seconds, if possible, and hours. But if we get a col uh, conditions-based monitoring data point, it will have another random second in the end. However, since we are now in slave mode, the instrument is in slave mode, controlled by the computer, it will not do a conditions-based monitoring. If we want to test that, we have to stop this monitoring here. And uh, once the last measurement has been taken, we can go out from this window. There we go. And then we go to File, Close. And now, in order to test the conditions-based monitoring setting, we do the following. We set it to measure by logged internal measurements. And it doesn't really matter what time and, and interval we put, because I'm going to put it so far in the future that it will not start measuring. Like that, and then start logging mode. Now it's in logging mode, but it's starting in 23 hours and some minutes. Now we go back to monitor and display 
and instead of selecting control network as master we'll select select listen to network in logging mode we just have one instrument we could actually have many instruments connected and every time an instrument sends a data a measurement it comes up here and here we got one from this instrument which means it's a conditions based monitoring data point I shook it and it was vertical and we can see over here to the right that I had 21.9 mil G in vibration which was enough to trigger a point if I shake it a bit it took another one 547 now there is another feature in the CBM and that is that every time it takes a measurement it raises the threshold of vibration by one bit you know and that's it's done in order to avoid that it will fill the memory with that eventually it will come up to the level where it will not take any more measurements now let's see this we put it horizontal and I shake it nothing happens upside down shake it nothing happens this way immediately it took a measurement now we can go and see these measurements in the burst samples we select acceleration over here and we'll start with number zero and this was the first one when I held it virtually still and then we go to number one I shook it and you can see that the scale here is 0g here minus 2g there 1.6 there and the round dots that's the z and you remember round because the instrument is round in that direction the square is the level of the PCB of the sensor it's square in that direction and these pluses here are perpendicular to the PCB so that's the y if we go to the next one that's when I turned it back down and there you got another one so this way we can check live that the CBM values we've put in are useful for our application I will turn this off here oh by the way while you're doing this if you you can use this actually in in real-time monitoring and the advantage with this is that the data is stored both internally in memory in the instrument and sent to the computer where you can set up log to files here and actually log the same data to file in the computer and in the instrument if you lose the instrument you still have the data if the cable is cut for some reason it's still measuring in the instrument so you have double safety there I will not store it here that was just an illustration so and now uh, let's quit this and go back and take another look at the edit advanced reconfigure oh by the way it doesn't really matter but it's better to stop it from logging and now go to advanced reconfigure accelerometer um, again we'll read it from the instrument to get the latest and here down here we have the condition based monitoring settings if you want to inactivate it just click this button here is the easiest it will put the threshold for slope at a level which it can never reach which is absolutely impossible and if you want to be even more sure you can put the magnitude here as maximum so this here I use this as a pointer this here is the the slope the tilt the maximum tilt it will measure at and here this part here is the magnitude of the vibration the shaking 
in bits. And here it's calculated what the equivalent is in g-force and, and meter per second square. And down here, duration. How many measurements? Uh, it's a little fault here. It says one as the minimum. We'll change that to zero as the minimum because zero actually means a single measurement. So now it has to be two measurements. And then down here is a high pass filter. There are four, four settings. And here you can see what the frequency is. So it means the, it's the frequency with which it detects its orientation. So if you move the instrument like this, it will record a big shake because you changed the acceleration. That's the, why, that's the reason why it takes a measurement immediately when it turns it that way. But when it's... So th this determines how long time it takes to stabilize. And that value, this frequency value depends on the... Let me see here if I change this. Yes, it de depends on the data rate. And some other values here obviously depend on the resolution. So you can play around with that. Here is the, for those who know about computers, first in, first out memory. The only mode supported now is FIFO, is stream mode, but it's available. And down here we have the same thing we have in all the windows, which instrument to send it to. By default, each instrument has number one in the network. If you have a network with more than one instrument, you need to, to give them individual numbers, and then you can actually change this uh, it doesn't make any sense doing it because in order for this to take effect you have to go up to the instrument with a magnet and reset it so mm, really makes no sense here but it was left there and here we can see manufacturer model and serial number of the instrument when this is uh, saved you can save it here the, your settings to the computer and then you can read back your old settings if you want but it will only allow it to be uploaded to the exact same instrument with the same model version number of firmware and serial number so that's a brief introduction in the new software what you can do with the adjusting the accelerometer how to use the accelerometer and how you can put it uh, in conditions-based monitoring for different situations. And I hope you enjoyed this. All the SM4s are able to use this new feature. So this is a new feature that we bring to all existing users. And also I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all of you.